Shalom again from the Eilat Prayer Tower in Israel. This is part C of the third part of a historical webcast during Yom HaKippurim, the Day of the Atonement of 2013. If you have not watched the previous two webcasts, after this time of prayer, you should go back and watch the other webcast because it is building one upon another. We're not going to go back to what we already talked before, but in summary, we have talked about the connection of the judgment of the nations with the way that the nations have behaved concerning Israel and especially the church in the nations. We have been reading Jeremiah 30 and Jeremiah 31 that you should read uh, at your own time as well, where it talks about God bringing about a complete destruction to the nations that plundered Israel when Israel, the Jewish people, were in exile during the 2,000 years of exile. We have spoken about church history, that most of the massacres against the Jewish people were in the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of Christianity because of a demonic theological replacement theology that was established as church doctrine all the way from year 325, 4th century, through Constantine and the early church fathers and all the way until today many people are in it and have not repented from it. And Yah is now calling every church, every denomination, every Christian to repent from replacement theology, uproot all of its mixture from within their doctrines, and to return to the olive tree and the gospel made in Zion, and to get engaged directly with the restoration of Israel through prayer, intercession, declaration, singing financially, and coming up to Zion. We are going to move directly into the intercession concerning the church in the nations using right now the people that are in this place, in the prayer tower, from different nations. I'm going to be calling them one by one and I pray that you and your nation will join them in prayer and intercession as the first step towards the act of repentance and towards the act of restitution. It is not enough to just say, Lord, forgiveness, forgive me because I, my parents or my grandparents or my ancestors have done this or that, but it is also pertinent that you get engaged directly into the restoration of Israel practically and actively. And of course, you have the possibility of doing so with us or with an, any other ministry that God is calling you to do that with, even throughout the land of Israel. And so now we are going to again uh, begin into the time of prayer. And Father, we declare that we set apart this time of prayer, the end of Yom Kippurim, the, uh, the end of the Day of Atonement, before we blow the shofar of forgiveness and resurrection. And we pray that your anointing will come down upon all of those that need to be praying here and interceding for the nations at the time where you have already decreed a judgment over all the nations that have come against Israel. In Yeshua's mighty name, and I bless you and I praise you for this sacrifice of prayer and intercession to be acceptable before you, Adonai. We're going to start with Pastor Phyllis from Australia. She's going to stand in the gap for the church and for the south lines of the Holy Spirit. as we come before you right now we just offer ourselves to you Father as we uphold Israel we just thank you and praise you that this is your land that these are your people and Father right now as I stand in the gap for Australia and the great south lands of the Holy Spirit all of the Solomon Islands and right through Papua New Guinea, Tonga, yes. New Zealand, Australia. Oh. Father, we repent and we ask for your mercy upon each and every one of us. Father, we know that you are a God of loving kindness and that as we ask and we repent from this sin, 
of standing against Israel and not seeing her as the mother of all of the nations. Father, we just ask your forgiveness right now as we make Teshuvah on behalf of our nations. Father, we just thank you that you're raising Australia up out of the dust with our new Prime Minister who has said that he is standing with Israel. Yes. Father at the United Nations, he says he will stand with Israel. And that's what we're asking, that all of us will intercede for Israel, just like that Esther church, that we can fast and we can pray and continue to intercede, that you will restore everyone and everything here in your land. Father, Ezekiel 36, 24, 28. We know that you're going to because you say, I will gather you from the nations. I will wash you with clean water. I will cleanse you from all of your filthiness, all of your idols. I will take out your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will fill you with the power of the Ruach HaKadosh. And I will cause you to walk in my statutes and in my ordinances, my Torah. Then, and only then, will you be my people and I your Yah. So, Father, right now, as I stand in the gap for all of the priests of the land, right through Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Tonga, all the Solomon Islands, I say, Father, forgive us for reteaching and preaching replacement theology that has taken us right away from Israel. Father, may we just get on our knees and ask forgiveness for bringing in this paganism. Father, we ask that as we repent and ask your forgiveness, that you would download us with your plans and your purposes. Father, we want to know your Torah because it teaches us love and tenderness. It teaches us life. It teaches us how to relate to each other. So Father, we just thank you and praise you that as you are restoring everything back to your original plan and purpose and bringing your people, your Jewish people, back to the land, that you will be to show uh, Israel as a light to the nations. So we just want to glorify you right now in Yeshua's mighty powerful name. And all the people said, Amen. 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 Pastor Phyllis, could you just in like five minutes share with us what did the Lord show you today as you were fasting and praying? As I was uh, fasting and praying uh, today, um, Yah showed me to begin with that he was raising Australia out of the dust of the ground. But as the, it was rising, I also saw a, uh, phoenix bird. a phoenix bird. And we all know that a phoenix bird is a mystical bird and it's all involved with witchcraft and all the rest of it. So I'm asking that we would pray and intercede for our government it's rising, raising Australia up out of the ashes, but we must not allow it to become a phoenix bird. Amen. And as I was praying about that, I also went back to, he took me back to uh, the year 1917, when our 800 light horsemen were here in the land the Aussies and the New Zealanders and how they liberated Beersheba. But there was so much Australian and New Zealand blood that was shed for, the, for Israel. And today I could see the blood of our Aussies and our New Zealanders 
rising up and crying out to Yah. We want Australia as a sheep nation. Yes. That's what we're wanting. Sure. Yes. So that's what we need to pray for. Yes. And, uh, and it will come to pass. Hallelujah. Because Yah is a covenant Yah. Yeah. He it has a covenant with Aussies. It was the youngest nation of the world that liberated the oldest nation of the world. And that oldest nation was Israel. And what happened in 1948? It was reborn again. And I believe that it had a lot to do with our Aussies coming and liberating Beersheba first. And then, of course, the liberation of Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. And of course, we cannot sleep on the laurels of that, but there has to be a repentance going throughout all of Australia concerning replacement theology. Agreed. Because of the connection with Christianity and with the British people as well that broke the covenant with Israel and gave 70% of the land of Israel to Jordan. That's right. So there's more to pray and talk about it in that. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Phyllis. And let us move on. We're going to actually continue from the south. We're going to go to South America. And I'm going to call Dr. Reed to come and pray on behalf of the church in South America. And South America in general, you being a Mexican of origin, I want you to represent the continent. Let us all join with him, standing in the gap for South America. Abba Shabbat Shemayim, we just come to you now. And Father, we ask that you would have mercy for all of the evil that has been done in our nations, Father, and in Spain, Father, to the Jewish people. Father, Great evil came against these people, Father. Many of us are actually of Jewish origin, but Father, in the nations, we, we left your people. We did not intercede for them. And I ask for your forgiveness, Father. Forgiveness for all the evil that was done through the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christo, by the church, Father. And the Inquisition, Father, that did such evil to these people, Father. Father, we ask for your forgiveness, Father. And Father, I pray that you would open every Hispanic person's eyes, Father, to see and to bring repentance, Father, for what was done through the Spanish Inquisition, Father and through replacement theology, Father, all of the evil that came forth out of that evil system, Father. And Father, we turn to you, we make the Shuvah, we repent, and we return to you. We seek your face, Father. We want to learn your laws, your way, because your way is perfect. And Father, we want to be sheep nations, Father, lovers of Israel, supporters of your people. And Father, I pray that all of those that are Sephardic blood, Father, that you will bring them back to this nation, that they will stand in the gap for Israel, Father, that you just touch them, and that, Father, they will become mighty sheep nations and mighty supporters of Israel. Yes, Lord. Not, only, not only spiritually in prayer, but financially with their lives if necessary, Father. That you draw them, Father. And we thank you, Father, for your love, your mercy that has been extended to us this day. Yes. That you have not yet judged. You have, there's judgment decreed, Father. But Father, you are holding your hand to allow us to repent. You're still calling out to us through your prophets, Father, 
through your apostles, showing us what we need to do to bring about change. And Father, it's not too late. There's still time. You said to come to you while there's still time. Seek your face, and we do, Father. We humble ourselves. We seek your face, and we pray for your forgiveness, Father, for each of the nations, Father, in the mighty continent of South America, and in Mexico, Central America also, Father, in the United States. We praise you for what you're doing. In Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Thank you very much. There's many Sephardic Jews in South America that are, do not know that they have converted to Catholicism through uh, the Spanish Inquisition. But Yahweh is really calling them to return to their roots as Jews and even have a promise for them in Obadiah 20 that they will possess the cities of the Negev and some of them have been actually converted to Judaism and coming back from Peru and other nations, Ecuador and other nations. There is about 60 million descendants of those Jews that actually converted to Catholicism mostly by force, not um, because of the persecutions of the Catholic Church at that time. We are going to proceed now with, um, with um, North America. And we're gonna, uh, I'm going to call Kyla Kellogg to come and to represent her nation of North America and stand in the gap for her. Oh, Abba Shabashanayim, we just come before you and we thank you for your great mercy and I thank you for your people Israel who are a blessing to all the nations who have brought forth the the, the Torah has come forth from your nation, Israel. Not any other nation, but you chose Israel to bring forth your righteousness and to bring forth your Mashiach, who is the only atonement for our sins. And we thank you that Israel is our mother. And Abba, I just pray and I cry out on behalf of America, North America, that you save your people, Israel, that the remnant would come forth, Abba. And I thank you that you have loved them with an everlasting love. And therefore, you shall draw them with your kindness to your new covenant. I thank you that your word is true and it shall not come back void. Amen. Abba, I thank you. I thank you that you, who scattered Israel, gathers them and shall guard them as a shepherd with his flock. And I just ask. I just repent on behalf of North America for all the horrible things that we have done to the Jewish people throughout the years. And I don't shun your judgment, Abba, but I welcome your judgment that the humble will be saved and that your righteousness will be established. And I thank you that right now it is a time of repentance and that there is still hope for a teshuvah, a turning back, and I thank you that repentance is not just a coin phrase, but it is a verb, an act. And it is time that North America acts upon repentance towards the Jewish people and, and undoes all the, uh, the harm that it has done to the Jewish people and begins to um, make an act of restitution towards the Jewish people and start treating them as the blessed people that they are of Yahweh. And I just, I just ask that you would bring all the Jewish people, that you would remove the blinders of all the Jewish people in North America, and that you would bring them back to their land, and that they would claim their Torah, and they would claim their Mashiach once again, that you would remove the blinders so that they would see Yeshua as the Jewish Messiah, and they would claim Him once again, and, and not, uh, you know, letting letting it go, but just claiming him, putting, gripping, getting a grip on the Torah and who their Mashiach is and who their atonement is, even this day of Yom HaKippurim, that they would, their eyes would open and they would see who is their only atonement, Yeshua of Nazareth. We ask that you would open their eyes to the scriptures today, that they might see their salvation. In Yeshua's name. 
Thank you very much. Definitely America needs repentance seriously from even pushing Israel to divide the land and the division of Jerusalem that is pending over this is a very serious issue. The America has suffered many storms and many disasters that coincide with bad political decisions concerning Israel. And, uh, Today, Colorado is in flooding. People are lost. There's many, many things that are happening in America, and definitely I cry out with Kayla uh, for uh, the repentance of America, starting with a church that has been so steeped in replacement theology that um, have rejected the gospel made in Zion and have adopted a kind of a mixture between pagan Christianity and charismatic Christianity or any kind of evangelical Christianity and has not really understood that the, the whole thing comes from Israel and therefore they have still steeped in, in that replacement theology whether it is a portion of it or all of it and so we're really calling America to repentance today and we know that as the church would repent it will impact the government of the nation and it will impact the next government of the nation as well in Yeshua's name. We pray and I, I received from Yah that there will be a holy remnant and that just like blind Samson, America has been like blind Samson and when blind Samson repented and he cried out he said give me one more time my strength yes. for the eyes that I've lost. Yes. And there was a one more time feat of great power that actually brought down the temple of the Philistines and Samson died with it. But I believe that Yah will allow for one more amazing revival yes. in America, but it will have to be a messianic apostolic prophetic one yes. that is with a key of Abraham of Genesis 2 or 3 and with a restoration of the gospel made in Zion and active restitution towards Israel. No other revival will take root. So praise God. Father, we just thank you for that and we call forth that last day revival. In Yeshua's name. Thank you. We cry out to all of your Jews that are still in, in America and are still duped by the mammon to come home, yes. to come to Israel. Amen. In Yeshua's name. For Jeremiah 16, 16 says, I will send the fishers, and if they and I, they will fish from all the towns and the cities that I've exiled you to. But if you do not come back, I will send the hunters. And the hunters is actually the Jew haters. And they're already manifesting in America and they're manifesting all over the world and all over Europe. Oh, yeah. And because of the recession that is happening in many, many nations. It is a very dangerous time for the Jews to be the scapegoat of that one again. So this repentance is a matter of life and death to the nations and to many of the Jewish people in the nations as well. Yahweh will protect us and bring us back. But the nations will go into complete judgment and the wrath of Elohim. So, hallelujah, this is only a, a beginning, only a start. Now we're going to call somebody to represent Scandinavia and all of Europe. Hadassah, come over here, please, and represent your country, Scandinavia, but also stand in the gap for Europe in general. And we will be praying with you. I bless Israel on behalf of Finland and all Scandinavia. And I ask your forgiveness that we haven't used the key of Abraham. We have rejected your Torah. And instead of blessing our brothers, we have said that we even do not know them. We have said that we even do not know the name of Israel anymore. We have been even shamed of Israel in our churches and denominations. We have hated even those that have gone to keep Israeli flags on their windows, Father. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us, Yahweh, in the name of Yeshua. And we thank you for every Jew in our nations that are there right now, still scattered in our nations. And we bless them instead of cursing them. We bless Israel instead of cursing them. And we repent from all idolatry and lawlessness in midst of us, in midst of church. church. And we ask your forgiveness for bringing all unclean stuff into our churches, for bringing replacement theology, for killing our mother. Forgive us, Father. 
I break the Torah's lesson. I break all the power of lawlessness in Yeshua's name. I break all the hatred, anti-Semitism, all the plunder and hatred towards your holy nations, and many times towards themselves because there is so much Jewish blood flowing in those nations, Father and break the power of self-hatred and rejection in those nations and all the power of the curse that can come through the replacement theology. I break it in Yeshua's name right now upon those nations. And I declare that every drop of Jewish blood becomes a soul for Yeshua HaMashiach. And every drop of Sephardic blood becomes a soul for Yeshua HaMashiach. In the name of Yeshua, I ask your forgiveness and I receive your forgiveness and I thank you for your mercy right now at this Yom Kippurim. And I thank you that we can answer to that calling to make alias possible. And I ask your forgiveness, Father, that Finland has not been answering to that calling, to the holy calling of making alias possible for Jewish people and making spiritual aliyah possible to the church to come out of replacement theology up to Zion. And right now I receive that calling back to our nations. I receive that aliyah calling. And I call all the Finnish people to take this calling now upon your heart. Take this calling as the heart business of Yahweh number one because he wants all the Sephardic Jews back to the land. He wants all of them back, and that's the hard business number one, because it's the key. It's the key. And think that you have been called to use that key. You have been called to make as many alias possible as you ever can in any ways you can. And Yahweh will provide everything for you to make it happen in the power of Ruach Kodesh, in the power of Yahweh, not by own strength, but by the power of Elohim, by the power of Yahweh. You can make it, and you can stand in the cap. You can stand and bless your brothers and sisters. You can stand there, even though it will be stormy, even though it will be hard. But you stand there by the power of Yahweh, not by your own strength. And we receive that power. We receive that power right now. And we thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for the blood of Yeshua, because in the blood of Yeshua, all the curse changes into blessing. In the blood of Yeshua, that's the Jewish blood, that is the greatest blessing poured out for our nations. The blood of Yeshua, the Jewish blood of Yeshua, put to the altar for us. And we praise you and we kneel down on that altar. Thank you, Yeshua. Amen. 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 Thank you, Vanessa. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to be calling now. Um, there's so much more, and I wish there would be more nations here today represented, really, and more, more parts of the world. I'm still missing the Far East and Africa today in the tower. Um, not that we don't have disciples in the Far East and in Africa, which we do, and also in other parts of um, Europe and Germany. But how important would it be to have been here to be able to do this act on the holiest day of the calendar year? 
And my prayer is definitely that this can reach them wherever they are as well. And it will go like fire, like holy fire throughout all of the nations of the earth. And you know, we recently did an act of repentance in Miami, Florida, in the Jewish Museum, uh, which is in the two oldest Jewish synagogues there. And uh, we had people coming from different parts of Florida to accompany us in, in that act of repentance. And prior to the act of repentance, Yahweh took me to the scriptures and he showed me that this is like the days of Noah. That people are going to be eating and drinking and given in marriage and then all of a sudden the flood will come and take them all. And that these acts of repentance were forming a Noah's Ark. And that this, this, this repentance towards the nations and the sins committed by replacement theology, the church, and the nations towards Israel, and the people coming out of the replacement theology, they were all going to enter into an ark, like a Noah's ark, a place of protection during the time of judgment and the wrath of Elohim poured out on the nations. And my praise that, you know, it will not be like at the time of Noah, that Noah knew what was going to happen, and when he spoke it, the people there didn't believe him. And the only ones that went with him were actually his family, you know, his own three children, and and his, their wives, and his own wife, and then a lot of wise animals. You know, the animals did obey the call, and the animals actually were wiser than the people there. I mean, more animals were saved than people at that time. Isn't that amazing? My prayer is that there will be wise people that hear the call at this time, and will enter into that ark, like Noah, that protection place, at the time of judgment. And they will be in the time of Revival and blessing at the time of judgment as the wrath of God is about to be poured out in the nations. We are really almost midnight on the on the historical clock. And that is my prayer therefore for you and all of them that will be listening to this word all through my books, or GR and Bible School, in Yeshua's name. And the other preachings that we've done in the nations. Now we're going to move into a time of interceding for Israel. And I'm going to invite, first of all, my own husband, Rabbi Baruch Birman, to represent the Jewish people in Israel today here and to um, repent before Yahweh for rejecting the Messiah and for still rejecting the Messiah so many times until today and ask for forgiveness today for all those that are going to the synagogues expecting to be written in the Book of Life without the blood of Yeshua. Rabbi Baruch um, is, uh, was an Orthodox rabbi in two uh, county jails in the United States. Federal, federal, federal penitentiaries, thank you for the correction, Rabbi. Federal penitentiaries in the United States. And then he made Aliyah as the first convicted felon to make Aliyah uh, to Israel, to immigrate in Israel on parole. Uh, he um, wanted to be a rabbi when he was young. And he's loved his, he loved his, he thought that when he was coming to Israel, he would actually uh, get all the, Jew, the Orthodox Jews saved. So he went to a yeshiva, uh, you know, like a, a school of Jewish studies, and he was going to try to infiltrate the yeshiva, learn with them, but at the same time preach the gospel to them. He may have been instrumental for the salvation of one of the rabbis of the yeshiva, and then Yah took him out of the yeshiva, and he hasn't gone back there again. But he does have a heart especially for the Orthodox Jews, and he has a special heart for all those Jewish people that are seeking for God and yet they're still holding into religion. He himself had to be, uh, uh, you know, delivered from religion. So I believe he's really the best one to intercede for those that are going to synagogue, expecting to be written in the Book of Life, and yet not without Yeshua. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, I've been going to synagogue since I was, uh, I can remember, probably five years old. Um, I was a rabbi's bodyguard at eight years old. And uh, when I was bar mitzvah at 13, everybody thought I was going to be the next rabbi. And, uh, but I found out there's hypocrisy in Judaism. But it was the only religion I knew. There's hypocrisy in every religion. I really wanted to know the truth. And when I was eight years old, I remember praying, Jesus, if you're really the Messiah, reveal yourself to me. 
and the man who is on television, Bishop uh, Fulton Sheehan, he says, God, what, Jesus, Yeshua, he's going to reveal himself to you as your Messiah. And he used the word Messiah. It really touched me that somebody knew that we were waiting for the Messiah. So 25 years later in a jail cell, Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, appeared to me. And believe me, I, I, I had Christian friends, Catholic friends. I'd seen pictures of Jesus Christ. And the one who appeared to me wasn't him. So I didn't know who this could be. He had a um, long white robe on. He had sandals on his feet. Beard down to his belly. I mean, you know, like an Orthodox Jew you'd see at the wall. And uh, I wondered who this could be. Because I was brought up Jewish, you know, and I had Christian friends and watched television in America. And, you know, Everybody knew who Jesus Christ was, but who's this guy standing before me who looks like an Orthodox rabbi? He had a nose like my nose, except he had the hook. Even more Jewish than my nose. He had the most Jewish nose I ever saw. And I thought, who is this Jewish guy, you know, dressed with this white robe and this bright light behind him? And then I looked on his head, and he had a crown of thorns. I said, oh my goodness, could Jesus be Jewish? I mean, this is an Orthodox rabbi I'm looking at. That's not this Christian Jesus guy. Didn't have blonde hair and blue eyes. He was a Jew. And, and the moment I saw he was one of us, I said, wow. I want him to be my Messiah too. And his crown of thorns, which had alighted at, at, at the end of each of the thorn started spinning like in, in Independence Day and in Yomat's Mut, there's these things you light and they spin around and those sparkles. Well, his, his crown started spinning faster and faster and through all the stars in heaven. Whoa, my goodness. And all of a sudden, all the anger I grew up with left me. And uh, I had to be delivered from a lot of other things. But that was a moment that, my goodness, I knew God's love and Anger and hatred had no place in me. It was sort of cool. They said my face was glowing in solitary confinement, but I couldn't see it. So, um, But uh, God brought me to Israel with signs, wonders, and miracles. And like Bishop said, my wife, I, I had this great idea. Well, I know who the Messiah is, and I, and I was in prison another few dear years, so I was able to read the Bible quite closely and do a lot of praying. And, um, and I saw Yeshua, the Messiah, is from the first page to the last page. And I could explain to a Jewish per person, after I was anointed, who the Messiah was. And by the time I came to Israel, I knew the scriptures oh, quite uh, a lot better. And um, I had, like Bishop said, this wonderful idea my goodness, I felt, I, I, actually, Jewish people, and at least me, I had like blinders on that when the Messiah came to me, I heard them hit the floor like metal, like you, like you put on a horse, a racehorse. They have these, these, these blinders. They can't look to the side. They can only see forward. And I heard something metal like that hit the floor when, when my eyes were open. And then all of a sudden I could see Yeshua on all the pages, but I said, Lord, you're going to have to teach me because I don't know how to tell a Jewish person that Jesus, the one who's killed us, is our Messiah. And sure enough, he brought me to Israel. I went to Yeshiva, and uh, I learned the scriptures even better. And then God showed me that that was my idea, not his. I had my beard that kept on growing. You remember my beard? It just kept on growing. I, I wanted to have a beard like Yeshua had, down in my belly. <laughs> but I was installing air conditioning, concrete block walls, and when I drill into them, sometimes my beard would get caught in the drill, so it wasn't really convenient. And then, just before Bishop and I uh, got back together, I met her at the... Um, 
Tafel America is at the central bus station of Jerusalem. And uh, and I thought, wow, I'm so happy to see a Jewish girl came and, and knows that Yeshua is the Messiah. I, was, I, I just give her a big bear hug. And I said, oh, you know, I was speaking to God. I said, God, you know, this that's not bad. And she was speaking to God at the same time. She says, God, I never want to see this guy again as long as I live. <laughs> Well, thanks God for listening to me. <laughs> Remember, I had already prayed 10 years for the right woman for me, so. You are favorite. <laughs> favorite. But God loves his people. Amen. And I know for a fact that my few people, my brothers, my sisters, even my natural brother and sister, have blinders on their eyes. And according to Romans, that blindness had to come to, to the Jewish people that salvation could come to the nations. Romans 11. And so I pray right now that this is, the, this is the day and this is the year of salvation for my natural people, for the Jewish people, for all of Israel and all the Jews throughout the world, that the blinders that God put on our eyes would be falling that eyes and hearts and ears would be open to the truth that's written in our holy scriptures. They're not Old Testaments. They're the Hebrew holy scriptures. And they're the truth. And they're the word of God. And Lord, that that word would go down deep and take root and produce fruit upwards. Lord, that all of Israel is, will be saved. But Lord, that the majority would be saved this year before any more wars and rumors of wars that, of course, we see on television and see in the paper all the time. The wars and rumors, we know we're on the winning side. But we know there's going to be casualties. We want everybody to know Yeshua HaMashiach Ben David, the Messiah of Israel in the world, who came to make Jew and Gentile into one new man. And Lord, that we would love our brothers and sisters. Whether they're born Jewish, whether they're born Muslim, whether they're born Christian, Lord, that they just be born again in Yeshua's holy name. Standing the gap now for the Jewish people as well, for the Israelis. And um, especially for the Sephardic Jews that um, lost their identity due to the Spanish Inquisition, that there will be repentance among them to return to the fall. You know, we missed, we, we lost six million Jews in the Shoah. Many more millions throughout the, the centuries, but um, there's about 60 million descendants, and I'd ask you to give us a tithe. A tithe of those 60 million descendants to actually come and settle the Negev, which is uh, more than 55% of the land of Israel that's desert. That statistics, government statistics say that if we do not settle it with Jewish people, then the Negev will be taken over by Islam. And the Bedouins and the Muslims have been taken over the Negev, even illegally. And um, so my prayer, Father, today, in the name of Yeshua. Father, I lift up all those Jews that are among the nations, especially South America, Philippines, America, and everyone that has Jewish blood through the Spanish Inquisition lost their identity. You know where your Anusiman, your conversos are, your crypto Jews are. And I pray, Abba, that you will wake them up to who they are. You wake them up, Abba, in the name of Yeshua. And that you will bring them back to the land, but that they don't have to convert to religious Orthodox Judaism. But they can just do a course of return, a great return course, that they can learn the history, the geography, the language, the Torah, but not necessarily convert. I pray, Father, that you will wake them up in the nations now move throughout all South America, the Philippines, move all America, 
and everywhere where they would be, and bring them home. Everywhere where they've been, and even in Finland, and bring them home. Bring them home to you, and bring them home to the land. Let there be repentance in them for their ancestors that decided to forfeit their identity and pretend to be Catholics. They love their lives more than they love your name. And I give you praise, Abba, for that repentance to be upon them. And I ask your forgiveness for them. And I will declare an extended mercy upon their descendants. In Yeshua's name. And according to Obadiah 20, Father, that the captives of Jerusalem that are in Sepharad, they will possess the cities of the Negev, of the south of Israel, the desert of Israel. For we are the south gate of Israel. We call them forth to come and to establish the full Negev. With Jewish presence. Thank you for Islam to break in the negative of Israel. Yes. And for also repentance to fall upon the Muslims so that they can be saved and become a catalyst for the salvation of Israel. A secret weapon for the salvation of Israel. Father, I also ask forgiveness for the secular Jews as well as the Orthodox Jews, especially the secular Jews that are into New Age, spiritualism, astrology. Witchcraft of every kind, meditation, yoga, all kinds of Eastern things. You said that we have gone to wells that have no water, that hold no water, that our wound is incurable, and people say peace, peace, but there is no peace. And I pray, Abba, that you will begin to extend mercy to them and bring them like you brought me out of New Age. And witchcraft are no cult. So many Israelis are so steeped in New Age, Israel no cult. And I pray that you will now touch them mightily. Open up their eyes, their blinders, remove their pride. Do whatever needs to be done to bring them, because all of them are searching for God of some kind. Break them in, Lord. There's so many Israelis that are so spiritual. I pray you bring them in, together with all of the Bohemians, and all of those that are singers and dancers and artists and actors and actresses. Father, models, bring them in, Lord. Bring them in, Father. You remove the skates from them and bring them in. In Yeshua's mighty name, we give you praise. Give you glory and honor, Abba, for forgiving us for so long we have rejected you. And so many times we don't know we're rejecting you, we're rejecting Yeshua HaMashiach that's so obviously portrayed throughout all the scriptures in the Tanakh. Father, forgive us for our sins that made us blind. And I pray that you will open our eyes and ears. Remove our pride. Remove our pride. And bring us to repentance. Let this year be a year of harvest of Israel. In Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We say, like you said in Matthew 23, 39, you said you will not see me again until you say Baruch Haba Hashem Adonai. And you said in Acts 3, 19 to 21 that then the heavens need to retain Messiah until the restoration of all things, which is majorly the restoration of Israel. And we say Baruch Haba Hashem Adonai. Baruch Haba Hashem Adonai Baruch Haba Hashem Adonai Baruch Haba Hashem Adonai Baruch Haba Hashem Everyone else that has a prayer to pray, both there in the nations as you're praying, and even anybody that's sitting here that I didn't call to pray, or even if I called you to pray, but you still have another prayer to pray until sun sets completely and we can actually blow the show for here. It'll happen in a few more minutes. And just come over and just pray that prayer publicly. If there's any other prayer that God wants you to do, hallelujah.
you know that my father's family was Spanish origin. Mm. My mother's was German and Swiss. Mm. You can so, stand for Europe. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I just want to repent on behalf of the German people, Father, the nation of Germany, the nation of Switzerland, Father, for what they did and for what they didn't do, Father, during the Shoah. Yes. Father, that's so important. We just seek your face and we ask for forgiveness, Father, for each one, Father, that did not speak up, that did not stand against the evil forces, Father. Father, we ask for your forgiveness, for your mercy, Father. And Father, we ask for each nation in Europe, Father, that you would open their eyes to see and their ears to hear your truth, Father. And that, Father, they will turn from their wicked ways, Father. Seek your face. Repent. And, Father, become sheep nations, Father. Become lovers of Israel. Lovers of your people, Father. And supporters of your people. That there'll be a great turnabout great restitution father father all the monies in the swiss bank yeah. banks father right. that that will be released to the rightful owners father all of it that restitution would be made father and father we thank you for moving by your ruach HaKodesh, father to bring about change yes. we thank you we praise you for you are Arya. We love your laws. We love your word. We love your instructions. Help us to always be doers of your word. Lovers of Israel. In Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Amen. I'm very happy that this came forth because I was wondering and saying, who is going to stand in the gap for Germany, for Europe? Today, I'm pretty sure that that was brought forth today, and I didn't know that you had a part that was German and Swiss. Awesome. Anybody else that has still a prayer before we move into the blowing of the shofar, um, declaring the resurrection of Israel from the dead? <sighs> Hallelujah. And the resurrection of the Church of Messiah from the dead, the bride of Messiah. As we blow that so far. So if there's anybody else that still has something, don't hold it back. Don't hold it back. This is a divine opportunity where Yahweh's ears are very open today to all those that are coming in repentance to him. My first generation on my father's side. If you could stand with me. First generation yeah. on my father's side is from China. Yeah, thank you, Lord. He's the Far East. Oh, Father, we come before you. We know that China, even today, is coming against Israel. And is stand in the gap for the people in China. Father, they even persecute the churches. They persecute so many. They're very cold. But Father, there are people there that love you. And we just ask for your forgiveness. Forgiveness for what we've done. Forgiveness from turning from your word, your Torah, for allowing replacement theology to come in. And the results of that has been so much evil. And Father, we just ask you to for, forgive the many millions of people that are there and that are coming at, after and making unholy alliances to come against Israel. Oh, Father, I know in the midst of all of this, you are just a merciful God. And we just ask that you come mightily, sweet mightily through China. 
There's so many of your Chinese people that are spread throughout all the world. And many of us understand what persecution is. Have, us a, have the same heart, a love, a tenderness towards Israel, our mother nation, and that we would plead for you to reach out to your people, not be judges, not be executioners, but lovers of Israel. And we thank you for your Torah written upon our hearts and for what you've done and what you continue to do throughout all the nations. And we thank you that there will be a mighty wave, a tsunami, yes. that will come and just continue to go out throughout all the world. And we just pray to say thank you in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for for all the continents and nations that have been represented today. And uh, we are going to arise now, and all of us that arise, we're going to move into blowing the shofar. The last shofar, the Word of God tells us, is the shofar of resurrection. When the dead rise, the shofar, the last trumpet will sound. That's what the New Covenant tells us. And uh, I was, we blow that one. We're going to declare a spirit of resurrection into Israel, a spirit of resurrection into all of our lives, a spirit of resurrection into the bride of Messiah throughout the nations of the world. I'm going to invite my husband, Rabbi, to come and to join me as we blow the shofar today at the end of Yom Kippurim, 2013, year 5774 of the biblical calendar, a historical time of repentance. Today, go see all three of them 
and stay in touch with us. As I said, your feast offering is awaiting in online giving to support this ministry and this truth to go to all the nations of the earth, plus, of course, the establishing of the Elat Prayer Tower and many other works within Israel. We invite you to join for the restoration of Israel, the restitution that the nations need to give to Israel. Don't miss on it because that is not enough to just have lip service. We need action with lip service. We invite you to come to Israel, our Bible school on wheels and other things. Join, connect with the restoration of Israel. And hallelujah, don't, uh, don't go back to Egypt again. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.